Greetings in the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And my name is Elder Kelvin Graves. And for those who would like to get in contact with us, please reach us at ChristWins.org. And with that said, I'm going to talk about priceless. Priceless is when people are not willing to stand for, use Jesus' name, or express his will. There is no political correctness in God. And in this hour, people have become priceless, which equates to being Christless, which means they are not able to, or let me not say able, but they don't want to stand for Christ in an effective way. We got music, musicians, churches, and pastors, and people, websites, who are supposed to be Christian, who don't mention his name. There's a doctrine in the world that's been uh, conveyed by Satan that says, okay, we can all come together and be on the same platform, and the Christian can come, but just don't use his name. We've been placed in a position where it is offensive for us to express his name. The Bible says that if we are ashamed of him before men, he'll be ashamed of us before the Father. God did not call us to be silent in this hour. He calls us to convey his will. One of the things that has happened is that the American dream has deadened in the gospel in the American Christian. And what I mean is, our plights and our struggles that we go through in America are based on the false American dream, which means if we don't have a car, house, land, connections, friends, and so on, then somehow what we believe is not where it needs to be because everybody is self-actualizing and gaining things and equating that with righteousness. That couldn't be farther from the truth. There are people in countries who are standing for this gospel who are dying for what they believe. So, in order for us to keep all our American dream stuff, we have to deny him. We we got to take Jesus out of school. We got to take him out of the um, even all even Christian organizations. We have to take him out so that we can get along with folks. That ain't what God called us to. Somebody is dying right now, about to get their head chopped off because they're standing for this gospel. When I was in Saudi Arabia, I had the opportunity of preaching in a mosque. And when I was at the mosque, they conveyed to me, they said, we can't tell nobody we have in this service or we'll die for this. The Bible says this, we have not resisted under blood and I strive against sin. And that is true for the American Christian. Because we have so modified the gospel so that it can be pleasing to everybody. No, you have to proclaim his name and stand for righteousness and convey his will. The Lord said it to me like this. He said, the pulpits are getting too wide because you're allowing politicians, the homosexual, the other alternate lifestyles, the religion, the profane, the secular, the Hollywood actor. You're allowing everybody to get in the pulpit and convey their messages. And then to not offend them, you won't say what you need to say. For example, all unrighteousness is sin. See, in John's day, John stood and, and, and spoke against power in the sense that he said, Herod, adultery is wrong, and he paid the price for it. See, you got to put yourself in a position where you want to pay the price for Christ. Jesus said it like this. He said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. But in this hour, people don't want no woes. The Bible says this. Woe unto them who all men speak well of. But don't nobody want no woes. Don't nobody want to be in a position where they're talked about and made to feel like they're not accepted. You are supposed to preach this gospel even in the midst of other Christians to the point where it divides the house. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace with a sword. And with loving kindness have you drawn them, but the love has to be in accordance with his will. We have changed it into some sort of... Um, merging of everything and is and is and is is a form of godliness that denies his power. We got to return back where we're able to stand and suffer the consequences for what we believe. We got many examples in the Bible. We got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who didn't want to bow or who wasn't going to bow to the image of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar at one point had used these guys effectively. As a matter of fact, they were used by Daniel in helping him administrate the provinces. But when it came down to what they believed and they were challenged on it, they said, no, we ain't bowing to you because you ain't God. And ultimately, they got thrown into the fiery furnace. They got thrown in, you know the story. Nothing happens to them. They're saved through it. Same thing with Daniel. 
he's thrown to the lion's den because he don't want to get down with what the world is doing at the time. This is key. In the midst of that, God's power was perfected in their weakness. Their weakness was that they couldn't do anything other than comply with the, with the law that said you're going to suffer for standing against the world and not coming in and believing what we believe. They were positioned to suffer for righteousness sake and in that God de delivered them. In this hour people are deciding that look I don't want to go through but so much but so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do what the world say to, to cause peace and then that way I can make can convey Christ. You can't win nobody without his name. You can't win nobody without representing him. And it's it's and I'm gonna preach a message on this. It's is the, the connection is loose. If you bring people to Christ with some sort of um modified or unrighteous means, then you are not going to connect them to Christ. And I mean like, you know, we got this thing in the body of Christ where uh, Medea or whoever a man can put on a dress and we use him to bring people to Christ and God would never do that. We 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 allowing people who are secular in nature to stand in our churches and our platform platforms are politicians. They can say they can say Jesus one time and then the rest of their message, their fruit is poisonous to us because they're saying to everybody, you must accept this and that in order for you to be um worthy of our acceptance and that ain't the way this is supposed to be we got to be able to suffer for righteousness sake and be able to stand and let God deliver us through that because if we take down and modify it for our own comfort then we're, we're not standing in the will of God Peter after the day um, of Pentecost Peter and John they, when they went to the temple they were in a position where they were healing folk remember he goes to the temple and the guy is um, sitting there and he says, um, you know, such as I have, I give unto thee, rise and walk. You know, the folk in the, in that, in the, um, where they were in the temple got upset. They told him, hey, look, don't preach in that name. And they actually beat them for that. And Peter's response was, well, whether it's right for us to listen to you or to God, that's on you to decide. But I know I'm going to stand for righteousness and I'm going to say, thus saith the Lord. So if that means I have to suffer, I will. Paul did the same thing. Paul was in a position where he was actually preaching not just to the world but he was preaching to people who was, he was preaching to the disciples who were caught up in a circumcision and even at one point he went to a place and he suffered for that because in the midst of it they told him hey look there's a lot of other Jews around here who are for the circumcision so you know be cool he didn't do that he told them what the deal was and thus saith the Lord and conveyed his message and suffered for him was locked up put in chains and all of that See, we got to put ourselves in a position where we're willing to suffer for that and then God can give us a deliverance. Remember, this world is not our own. We're not here to gain fellowships. We're here to stand for righteousness. So if a person is in a religion that doesn't claim Jesus Christ as Lord and the only one that does that is Christianity, I'm talking about the gospel, Bible form of Christianity, then they are not in the right place and you got to tell them you got to cry loud lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion and convey to people you got to tell them Muslim you that ain't the way Jesus is the way the truth and the life and right now Christians are suffering in the workplace and in America because Muslims are coming in and they're saying we're offended by this and that but yet we can't convey that we're offended by what they do time out for that we're gonna have to stand for righteousness and let folk know and I don't care what religion it is you got to let them know if you believe in Christ you ain't gonna get up here talking about well maybe God no the Bible says this and people use this wrongly they say well he has sheep that's not of this fold but the rest of the scripture says that his sheep know his voice his voice and the stranger that they won't hearken to. Strangers are other religions. In Deuteronomy it says that if a prophet prophesies something but and it comes true, but he calls you to serve other gods, not to listen to what he says. So we got to get back to where we're willing to pay the price for this gospel and live fully for him so that we can be pleasing to him. You may upset your family, friends, folk around you, but they're just going to have to deal with it because... You have to, the Bible says this, don't fear those who can, you know, cast your body into prison and all of that, but fear the one who can cast your soul into hell, and that is our Lord, God. Like I said before, God's mercy is on us right now, but it's going to be a day when it's going to run out. So we got to come back to a place where we're wholly pre presenting ourselves to the Lord consistently and conveying his will so that now we can become the peculiar people and be a church that's set apart for him.
And with that, again, I want to say for those who want more videos, just go to ChristWins.org. Got a lot of information there, more videos for you. But with that said, we want to say thank you, and God bless you, and we'll see you on the next time.